Hello, I'm William Michael, uh, the headmaster of the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, and today is uh, August 5th, 2023. Uh, we're getting ready for uh, another academic year. The, the Academy's fall term starts the Monday after Labor Day in September, so we've got about a month left of, uh, of uh, summer administrative work vacation, things like that. And the Classical Liberal Arts Academy at this time is uh, really exploding in terms of the number of, of students being added to the program, interest being requested about the program. We're in the midst of an accreditation process, which is really going to open things up for us, I think, uh, moving forward in the future. And uh, the work is, is just nonstop, 24 hours a day. There's new requests for information all day long, tickets created about enrollment. Um, this stuff just comes in all day long, around the clock from all over the world. And as we've worked with parents and students for 15 years now, uh, there are a number of of uh, principles that have really become clear for me as I work with students and parents. And I'd like to articulate one of those principles today, which is really, I think, the most important in the work that we do. And it's going to be uh, a, a policy that, that I make sure is enforced in the academy as we move forward. And it's called uh, the academy's work first policy, the work first policy, and I'd like to explain it because it's very important for parents and students in the academy and for any prospective parents or students. Homeschooling is a giant market. It's a giant market that a million different people and companies are trying to get attention in and make money from. And the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, if you pay attention, you'll notice that we're really not engaged in that market. We're not interested in that market. We're not interested in the homeschool industry. We don't go to conferences. We don't advertise in any of the brochures or magazines that are published for homeschool families. We're really not interested in that mess of stuff um, because I think it's, it's largely a waste of time and money. Uh, I, I recently posted a video and an article where I talked about how homeschool families waste time and money. And uh, all of that is a problem in homeschooling that as the headmaster of the academy, I'm going to make sure that we just avoid. Uh, we have no interest in being a part of the homeschool industry, no interest in being a part of the homeschool market or having some share of the market. Our mission in the academy is academic and it's it's been exactly the same ever since we started 15 years ago. The mission of the Classical Liberal Arts Academy is to research, restore, publish, and teach the classical liberal arts curriculum, the classical Catholic curriculum that's been enjoyed by wise men and saints all through church history. When I consider that mission of the academy, it really appeals uh, to very few people in the homeschool market as it is. It doesn't appeal to the popular, um, to the popular ideas and talk about homeschooling. Um, I don't support a lot of the talk and ideas in homeschooling circles. Uh, because there's, there's a lot of talk in the homeschool circles and very, very little actual result produced by homeschooling. There's very little to look for in terms of results, but there's endless, endless talk about homeschooling, about curriculum, about study methods. Um, I'm just not interested in that stuff. We're not sitting here in the academy debating how children should be taught. We're not reading articles that are published about new ideas or fads in education. Uh, I don't care how many different historical ideas there have been. I don't care about Montessori. I don't care about Charlotte Mason. 
I don't care about Dorothy Sayers. I don't care about all of these fads and ideas. I already know in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy what education has always looked like, what the subjects have been, what the study methods have been, what the texts have been, who the masters have been, and so on. All of that's explained in the book Understanding Classical Catholic Education. So while, while the homeschool world loves to debate all these things and talk about all these things and present all these different options, I'm not interested in that because none of it, none of it is historical. None of it is real. It's all modern reactions to modern education and modern problems. And I would rather just prevent all of those problems and just sweep them all off my desk and ignore them forever and just go back to what C.S. Lewis called the right road. So I'm not interested in the homeschool culture. I'm not interested in getting on the phone with homeschool parents and talking about homeschooling. I really am not interested in learning about anyone's homeschool experience. I'm just not interested because I think it's a waste of time. And I already know what needs to be done. I know how it needs to be done. And in the academy, we've already provided for it to be done. And there's really nothing to talk about. So as I said, the requests from prospective families, parents uh, you know, getting started with homeschooling, parents looking into the Classical Liberal Arts Academy as one of the options, everything that anyone needs to know about the Classical Liberal Arts Academy is already accessible on our website. It's already been said. It's already been written. It's easy to find. Everything is there. We have a help center that answers just about every necessary question that can be asked at classicalliberalarts.com backslash help. The questions have already been answered. On our website, on the Selecting Courses page, we've already explained the whole entire program, what courses children should study at different ages and grade levels, even though we don't support or recognize any kind of real grade level because that's just an artificial modern school creation. It's not real. But for anyone concerned about what courses to choose, where to you know, get started as a student, what courses to enroll in, all of that's already been explained on the website. There's nothing to talk about. And I say that because we'll get contacts from prospective parents who will say things like, you know, I'd like to have a phone call. I'd like to have a Zoom meeting. I'd like to talk to somebody about, uh, about getting... St We're not going to have those conversations because, like I said, in the homeschooling community, homeschooling families participate in those discussions forever. They never stop. They're constantly changing programs, changing ideas, starting and stopping, moving things around, and... If we look, there's never any upward progress. There's all kinds of lateral movement. There's all kinds of, oh, I tried that curriculum and didn't like, and then I tried this and I tried that. And I tried. And the kids, the poor kids are just bouncing around from one thing to the, they're never making any actual upward progress in their studies. They're certainly not progressing through any real classical Catholic studies. And I just don't want to participate in that homeschooling mess of wasted time and resources. In the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, we already know what needs to be studied. We already know how it needs to be studied, and there's no fussing about that. The main thing is the kids have to get tasks completed and stop messing around. We don't want to talk about screen time or uh, this method of study or that method or learning styles or this or that or what computer you're going to... We don't want to talk about those things because they're all irrelevant. What is relevant, the only thing that matters, is when a student starts a course, there's a task in front of him on that course. He has to get that task done as efficiently as possible. He's got to get that task done, and he's got to get to the next task and get that task done as efficiently as possible and continue because in the classical Catholic curriculum, 
there are thousands and thousands and thousands of tasks that need to be completed. And if we make a career out of talking about one specific set of tasks, or even one task, we're just never going to make sufficient progress to make a sufficient advancement into classical Catholic studies to actually accomplish anything. And so there, there's, there's the issue where if we waste time, and, and usually time is wasted on elementary stuff because parents feel comfortable with elementary topics, and so they want to pretend like there's some kind of expertise needed. There's some kind of magic method or secret, secret you know, tricks to teaching kids handwriting or basic arithmetic and things like that. And it's just a bunch of nonsense. We want kids to get through those studies and get into real stuff, real academic work. Things like the humanities and philosophy and theology, classical languages, classical mathematics, reasoning and rhetoric. That's the stuff that I'm concerned about. I'm really not concerned about a kid's handwriting. I really don't care what typing program you're using for a student to learn how to type. I don't care if you decide that you want to use another arithmetic program because modern arithmetic is largely irrelevant. All that you're going to need modern arithmetic for is to get things onto a transcript, and once you get them on a transcript, no one's going to care what program the kid used or what methods he... No one cares about that stuff outside of the homeschooling community because it's a market. Nobody cares about that. And I don't care. I don't want to talk about that. I'm concerned with the classical liberal arts. I'm concerned with scholastic philosophy and Catholic theology. That's what I'm concerned about. And like I said, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of tasks that need to be completed for students to make significant progress to the point where they begin to really reap the benefits of classical Catholic education. And if we don't get them there because we're wasting so much time talking idly about education, about homeschooling, about study methods, and all this other stuff, we're just not going to get to the end of this education. So this idea of the work-first policy, what it means is that we're going to provide support to parents and students who work first. We're going to provide resources and support to parents and students who work first. We're not going to spend time before enrollment talking about a thousand different topics in homeschooling, getting to know each other personally. We're not going to talk about, we're not going to do those things. All the information is available on the website. Parents who read that, who study the Understanding Classical Catholic Education lessons can learn everything on their own. When they're ready to commit to classical Catholic education for principles sake, they need to do so. They need to commit. They need to enroll and get started with the studies. We're not going to talk about different programs or try to build an individualized study plan for some, some homeschool family that wants to design their own curriculum. If you want to do it yourself, then do it yourself because I think a lot of that is, is just time and money being wasted for no real progress. When parents enroll in our program and get their children set up with courses and those children begin to complete tasks in our program, that's when we're going to begin engaging with those parents and students. We want to talk about those tasks. We want to talk about the lessons in the curriculum. And not just lessons in general. We want to talk about the specific places in the lessons where the students have trouble as they work through them. When they do their work first and find that there's a difficulty or a problem, that's where we're going to help the students. So for example, I'll have parents who contact us and before they even enroll, before they know anything about the courses or the lessons, they'll ask questions like, are there lesson videos? Are there books available? And these are just all irrelevant questions. What they should be asking is, 
does this curriculum allow me to satisfy the goals of Catholic studies? Yes or no. And based on principle, they should be making enrollment decisions. But they often come in with all kinds of, of, of other ideas and thoughts and, and theories. You know, they, they believe that screen time is bad for kids, so they're not going to use computers. They want to know if we can help them work off. No, we can't. If you have a theory about, uh, you know, the effect of computers, like the computer you're watching right now, which apparently is, is okay sometimes, if you've got a theory about that, well, then you've got to eat the consequences of your theory. That's why I don't hold that theory, because I know that it's not sustainable for most students, certainly not for my own children. So when you come up with, when you attach yourself with all these different theories and popular ideas and uh, what I call boogeyman, you know, ideas about learning and, and, and development, you've got to accept the consequences of those ideas. And if you don't want to accept the consequences, that's why you should not hold those ideas, because they have consequences that are undesirable. Many people, in order to avoid a bad thing, choose and end up with a worse thing. And it's just not reasonable or realistic. I don't want to talk about those topics. I'm not going to help parents design their own curriculum. I don't want to hear about anyone's philosophy or theory of education. We already have a philosophy of education. We already have a mission, and that's all that I'm concerned with. And when parents choose to go all in with us and enroll in our program, we want them to get their students started completing tasks. And as their students begin to complete tasks, that's where we're going to interact with those families. So students have a number of options. On every course in our curriculum, on every course page, where students access their lessons, there is a student support forum where students are invited to post any questions they have about their lessons. But notice what's important about this. These students are working first and asking questions as they study. We're not trying to create resources that prevent every possible, because it's impossible. We're asking the students to work first and get as much done as efficiently as they can. And if they run into trouble, ask for help. And we're going to make sure those kids who are working get the help that they need. When students submit assignments and they've gone through the assignment, they've followed the instructions, they've done the study, they've worked as hard as they can to answer all the comprehension lesson questions, to do the exercises and so on, and they submit those assignments, they've done their work first. That's where we're going to help them. We're going to help them as we review their work and supply feedback for their work if it's needed. We're going to seek to help them there. And the students should be working to not need any feedback, but to demonstrate their ability to study independently and understand the lesson content on their own, to work as efficiently as possible. That's the goal. But when those students submit their work, when they do their work first, that's where we're going to help them. And so you see that concept of work first, because I don't want to talk about parents, or I don't want to talk to parents who want to talk about what they're going to do in fantasy land in the future. I want to talk to the students who are actually working and getting things done day by day, because they're the only students who are going to make progress. And we've got to stop all of this homeschool culture with all of this idle talk, talk about schooling, about studies, about among families that don't make any academic progress. It's all talk and no action. There's no progress. There's no lesson completion. Most homeschool families are barely satisfying modern public school standards, and I'm not interested in that culture. We have so much work to do to get a classical Catholic education in modern society. We have so much work to do to satisfy modern school requirements while we get a classical Catholic education. These lessons are so many in number, and they're so difficult that there's no time to waste. There's no time for nonsense. There's no time for debates about study. There's no time for it. 
no time. And we're simply not going to support that in the academy. Our parents and our students are going to be parents and students who don't talk but work. We're going to work first. You think about St. Benedict's motto, Ora et Labora, that's the kind of spirit that we need to have in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. There's so much work to do. There's no time for nonsense. There's no time for homeschool conferences. There's no time to talk about education. We already know what needs to be done. It's already all laid out. All of the support resources are already available. We need to focus on getting tasks complete in these lessons, in these courses, as efficiently as possible so that we can make significant progress over a long period of time. That's the only way that these things are going to get done. And I'm going to enforce this policy very strictly to make sure that the kids who are working get the help they need and families who like to talk and spin the tires but don't actually get anything done aren't allowed to hog up our time and resources in the academy because it's a real problem in homeschooling. Parents want to develop personal relationships. They want to talk about their children's experiences and what they think about this, and they want to know what my opinion is of this theory and of Dorothy Sayers or Charlotte Mason. And this is all irrelevant nonsense because the tasks are in front of us, and we're not, we're not completing tasks, and that's all that matters. And if anyone disagrees with me on that, that completing academic tasks is not what matters, then you're going to need to go find another program where you can just spin tires with other parents and talk about work that you're not actually doing. Because the results of homeschooling are not a mystery. There's tons and tons of time and money and talk, and there are very few fruits to be found anywhere. And in the academy, I believe in homeschooling, but I don't believe in what most people do in homeschooling. I don't believe in the homeschooling industry. I don't believe in homeschooling culture. I don't believe in the homeschooling market. I believe in the potential of homeschooling. And that's what I'm hoping to fulfill and teach people in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. So our work first policy is going to be applied and enforced for parents and students. If you're a prospective parent, all of the information you need is available on our website or in our help center. We even have parent forums where you can ask questions of other academy parents. All the help you need is already available. There's nothing that we need to talk about one-on-one. -on -one. If you're a student, you've got student forum on every course page to ask any content questions. You've got the opportunity to submit quizzes and assignments and get help and feedback with work that you've completed. There's even a student forum where you can connect with other students. But we do not need tutoring sessions and things like that to talk about information that's already available so that you can try to avoid the work that a student needs to do. Remember, when we, when we talk about education and, and what, the, what the goal of education, you know, your education in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy is preparing you for a next step in your vocation. And for most of the students who work with us, their next step is going to be university studies. What the universities, especially the good universities, what they want to see is whether a student takes responsibility for his own studies and works independently. That's what they're looking for. And that's what I want to help develop in our students. I don't want to play super teacher. I don't want to be you know, the daddy who, who guides the children step by step. Students don't, don't need that support. They're rational animals created by God for this work. They need to be challenged to take responsibility for it. And those who, that won't, those who won't do so, it's good for them to learn that now because they're not going to have a future in academic work or in professional studies that require intense academic work. So they might as well learn that now and get that lesson out of the way. But for those students who are willing to 
to, to sit down at their desk, roll up their sleeves and grind and work for hours a day to get as much done as possible every day, to take responsibility for their studies, to complete lesson tasks, to work, to master their lessons and progress through whole courses over a long period of time. Those are the students that I want to make sure have the support that they need because they're the only ones who are going to accomplish anything in the long run. And we need to be honest about that. There's so much to do. The studies are so difficult. We can't play around and waste time and, and think that because we're all nice to each other, everything's going to work out well in the end. You don't need much of an education to get a job in America. You don't need much of an education to be a Catholic in America. But if you want a classical Catholic education, if you want to pursue wisdom the way that saints and wise men did through history, you have a lot of work to do. And we need to make sure that we're getting that work done. I need to make sure that I am directing students and parents <clears throat> in a way that will actually allow them to get that work done. And I can't allow all of this wasted time and talk and nonsense. I've got to make sure we're focused on academic tasks. So that's, you know, in a nutshell, the, the idea behind what we're going to be calling our work first policy. And like I said, it's going to be enforced very strictly because we have to make sure we're getting this work done and we can't allow this homeschool culture, this idle homeschool talk to, to you know, infect uh, our community in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy and simply waste time and, and develop all kinds of useless activities and resources rather than focus on actually helping students complete necessary academic tasks, which is the only thing that matters. So, again, that's going to be referred to as our work first policy. We're going to require that parents and students work first. And when parents and students take the initial step and get their part of the work completed, then we're going to help them finish that work and move forward in the program. But for those who want to stand at the front door and talk about things without doing that work, we're just not going to support that. And uh, uh, I think that everyone is going to see the progress that's made because the kids can do it. Families can do this. Families can succeed in classical Catholic education. But we've got to get serious about this. We, we can't waste time and continue to sit around blabbing about education. We've got to, to, to sit down and focus and work. And we've got to work as many hours as we can every day, as many days as we can every year, because this is the pursuit of wisdom. There's nothing more important. Nothing. Go read the book of Proverbs. There's nothing more important than the pursuit of wisdom. And it's very difficult because, as the old wise men say, the truth lies in a well. It's deep and it's difficult to get, and it takes a long time. That's why God gave us divine revelation in the first place, because wisdom is difficult to get to. And the only way that we're going to get to it is if we, instead of talking about our goals with a bunch of idle talk that's not supported by what we actually do, we've got to actually do the work all day, every day, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, because Wisdom is the knowledge of God. There's no, there's no division between our love of God or pursuit of God and pursuit of wisdom. Wisdom is the knowledge of God. And we'll see that when we begin to make progress. But if we don't make progress and spend all of our time talking about petty school lessons and modern arithmetic and, and basic grammar courses, we're going to spend money and time and, and never get any of the benefits of classical Catholic studies. And we've got to resist these temptations to sloth and idleness and focus on getting tasks done. And that's uh, the most important thing that I want to help parents and students do. And we're going to promote that through this work first policy in the support services that we offer. I hope that's helpful. God bless.